it breaks Rebecca's heart every time she sings with those boys, amen. And so it's good to have the family back together, and so what a blessing that is. I know how deeply they love each other, and uh, we're going to have a blast. Now, you pray for us as we go on vacation. By the way, if there's an emergency, stand up, Brother Palmore. <clears throat> you see this fellow right here? That's who you call. So if there's an emergency, like, oh, I don't know, somebody tries to blow your house up or something, uh, call, call, call Brother Fox. I mean, call Brother Palmore. And, uh, but no, he'll do a great job. I think you can be seated now. It's fine. And uh, Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. Here's what it says. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither is your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Now, I want you to understand that the natural man does not think by way of Scripture. The natural man only thinks by way of the flesh. The natural man only thinks by way of those things that commonly come to him. Uh, you and I, however, because we have the Bible, can be able to learn the ways of God. We can be able to learn how to please God. That's why coming to church is so important. That's why coming to Sunday school is so important. That's why coming back on a Sunday night or coming to a Wednesday night is so very, very important. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the more that you can get the Word of God in you, the more God builds your faith. The more that God builds your faith, the easier it is to go to Him when you have needs in your life. The easier it is to rely on Him. The easier it is to obey Him, trusting Him for the total outcome. But here we see where the Bible says, For uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither is uh, your ways my ways, saith the Lord. I want to speak this morning on uh, trust God for or to do the uh, unexpected. Has God ever done something or has something neat ever happened in your life that you know God's hand was upon it that was just totally unexpected? Uh, have you ever had somebody come up to you and been a blessing to you and you walked away in shock and you said, whoa, that was unexpected? Have you ever uh, been able to uh, accomplish something, and uh, you surprised yourself, and you stepped away, and you felt kind of good because it was like, wow, that was unexpected. Uh, have you ever done, I know, I know when our children got their driver's license, I thought, wow, they got it. Well, that was unexpected, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, did you know that God does some really neat things in our life? That if you stand back and you see what God has done, you'll be able to say, that was truly amazing. That was just totally unexpected. Now, I want to show you a couple of things this morning I think that you would agree on. Number one, God sent an unlikely Savior. Think about this from the humanistic uh, perspective. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 2, the Bible says this, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out, it says, of a dry ground. And he hath no form of cleanliness. The Bible says, and when uh, we shall see him, uh, there is no beauty that we shall or should desire of him. Here our Savior came, and our Savior, uh, being that which was an unlikely Savior, if you will, uh, from that which is the Heavenly Father. I mean, who would expect that our Heavenly Father, yea, the Creator of all creation, would give His only begotten Son? Would you do that? Who would expect, if you would please, uh, that our Savior would be born in Bethlehem in a manger? Would you expect the Savior of the world to be born in Bethlehem in a manger? Uh, who would expect, if you would please, that he would grow up in a carpenter's shop? And that one day, yes, uh, he would even take Joseph's place where now he's not called, as in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 55, uh, is not this uh, the carpenter's son. He would not be known as the one that was mentored by Joseph in the carpenter shop, but one day he would actually be called the carpenter. Uh, who would expect that to be? But yet there was an unexpected blessing. Yes, in God's love, God sent His only begotten Son for you and I. Unexpected, but what a blessing. God sent His only Son, and yes, born in a manger. Yes, uh, growing up in a carpenter shop. 
Yes, uh, being able to uh, go on the cross and to suffer, to bleed and to die, uh, being placed in a borrowed tomb, and yet God the Father raising His own beloved Son uh, so that you and I could have eternal life through His shed blood. All of that is unexpected, but can I tell you, many times unexpected blessings come your way. I'm so glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that there was a day when I received Jesus Christ as Savior, and I am a born-again believer, not because of the fact that I was raised that way. I was attending the Carnival Ground, July 24th, 1979, 8.30 and 5 at night when David Lee showed me the gospel, and I bowed my head as a strong Roman Catholic boy, and I bowed my head, and I received Christ as Savior. Who would have expected a teenager to give me the gospel? Who would have expected uh, a, a Roman Catholic boy to bow his heart and ask Jesus Christ to be his Savior? Who would expect a stammering a high school boy to stand up and preach the Bible without the stammering and without uh, uh, the uh, challenge of the speech impediment? Uh, who would expect something like that? Can I tell you? We have a wonderful God. And God gives us unexpected blessings. You can trust God to do the unexpected. You can trust God to be able to work in people's lives. You can trust God to be able to change people's lives. You can expect God to be able to give uh, the Savior to the world, though completely unexpected by most of humanity. Statement number two, you see this, that God saves unlikely sinners. God saves unlikely sinners. Dr. Fox and I was out door knocking yesterday, and uh, every Saturday I have the privilege to take different people with me, and we go door knocking. And uh, as we were out as partners yesterday, we were door knocking. And oh, at first we went out, it wasn't hot, as hot as it's been. But all of a sudden it warmed up. And boy, we're sweating. I mean, uh, we uh, took off these old jackets and threw them in the truck at the very beginning. But uh, as we went out soul winning yesterday as partners, uh, we had the privilege to show some people their need of receiving Christ. And they bowed their heart, received Christ as Savior. Yeah. Never will forget this one dear lady that was up at her uh, residence. And as we went up to see her, uh, she came outside and she started crying. And she said, I believe that God sent you by. Can I tell you? She was right. Uh, listen, uh, you know that there are people that God saves that are unlikely sinners. Oh, may I tell you this? You take the drug addict that receives Christ as Savior, that's an unlikely sinner. You take the person that is uh, an alcoholic and all they do is rely on their alcohol abuse. But can I tell you, God can reach down from the portals of glory and through His grace, He can help that person come to know Christ as Savior and He saves unlikely sinners. Can I tell you, he'll reach into uh, the metro on people that live in multi-million dollar homes that you would think would never receive Christ as Savior, but yet he's not the Savior of only the poor. He's not the Savior of only the middle class. Yes, he's the Savior of the world, and because of that, he's the Savior of all that call upon him, whether they be rich or poor, whether they be African American or Filipino, whether they be somebody that is uh, of uh, descent from Japan or maybe from China or maybe from Laos or Korea or maybe somebody that is an Irishman or somebody that's an Englishman. It doesn't matter who they are. God is rich unto all that call upon him. Uh, don't you, uh, aren't you glad that heaven is going to be a wonderful place filled with God's glory and grace. And can I tell you, uh, God saves unlikely sinners. Every single one of us owe a sin debt. Every single one of us, if we were to die without Jesus Christ, uh, we would be destined to burn in hell forever. Yet Jesus Christ, through his rich glory and grace, uh, reached down from the portals of glory through his son that shed his blood on Calvary. And because of that, you and I are saved forevermore. Now, by the way, you can get glad about that on a rainy day. You can get glad about that on a hot summer month. You can get glad about that when all of a sudden uh, the pay runs out before the end of the month. 
You can get glad about that when you have a boyfriend and when your boyfriend uh, chooses to have you no more, you can get glad about that when you have a girlfriend and but you just can't find her. And uh, can I tell you this? Listen, you can be glad that there was a day when Jesus Christ reached down and saw you in your miserable, sinful state and he reached down. He didn't pass over you. No, he came came directly to you. And because he did that, can I tell you, you can be saved by the very grace of God. Here's what the Bible says, Luke chapter 5 and verse 32. The Bible says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. The Bible says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation. The Bible says, listen to it, that Christ Jesus came into the world. Not, listen, to save sinners. He says, of whom I'm chief. Now, that's Paul speaking. Paul was a persecutor of the church before he became known as the great apostle Paul. He was known as Saul. A persecutor of the church would stand in the back of the church and uh, try to interrupt the sermon. And then he would follow those Christians down to their houses, take down their address, send those by to be able to apprehend them. Then we stand in a courtroom giving that which is testimony against them. Uh, Paul no doubt saw many people uh, march before he became as the great apostle Paul known as Saul uh, to that which is their grave. Now, here he is. Here he is. God changed him, but he never forgot who he was. He said, uh, I of whom I am chief. So he knew where God saved him from. And by the way, that would do us a great favor too. Before you get too high and mighty because you know your Bible, uh, don't forget where you came from. Before all of a sudden you start believing that you're the big cheese and you're putting on the game face, please don't forget where you came from. Oh, but I don't live that way any longer. Oh, but it wasn't too long ago that you did. Wasn't too long ago that God saved you. Oh, I've been saved, you may say, for 30 years. But it doesn't matter if you've been saved for 30 years or not. Uh, Still, 30 years is not a long time. Matter of fact, the older I get, most years are not a long time. I may say this, the Bible says over in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, but God commended his love toward us. Uh, The Bible says, listen to it, commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, the Bible says this, the Bible says, for when uh, we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died, listen to this friend, to the ungodly, for the ungodly. He died for the ungodly. That means he died for the hell-bound sinner. That's what that means. He died for the hopeless sinner. You know, an amazing thing is this. Uh, you, You can take a person that has never been saved, just never been saved. You can take a person that has never been saved, and uh, you can show them how to be saved. They can receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, by the way, once they receive Christ as their Savior, they are saved forever. He that hath the Son hath everlasting life. Didn't say he that hath the Son hath everlasting life if he never sinneth. It did not say that. It didn't say he that... uh, 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 He that hath received the Son hath everlasting life if he's baptized. Didn't say that. No, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There's not two ways to heaven. There's not three ways to heaven. There's not four, five, six, or seven ways to heaven. There's only one. You either come by the way of the cross through Jesus Christ, or you don't come at all. He that hath the Son hath everlasting life. Once you receive Jesus Christ as Savior, you have everlasting life. Now, wait a minute. Did you know that once you receive Christ as Savior and you have everlasting life, your seat is now taken care of as far as you're going to heaven. But God wants you to serve him. And you know what I think? I think a lot of people, they sit in the seat of salvation, but they fail to understand the significance, the importance of sitting in the seat of service. God does not want you just to be saved and satisfied. God wants you to be saved and serving. God wants you to do something. 
Now, you can take any sinner that receives Christ as Savior. Once they receive Christ as Savior, they're saved forever. Amen. Now, you can thank God for that. You might could even say amen about that. But once you receive Christ as your Savior, God wants you to serve. God's got something he wants you to do. The old preacher said, God did not save you to sit. God saved you to get up and get. Amen. All right. So you can take a sinner and a sinner can be used of God. A sinner can uh, have God put his hand upon them. Uh, that person that was hopeless as a sinner now has their hope in Jesus Christ. All right? So God sent an unlikely Savior. God sent an unlikely or saves an unlikely sinner. You ready? God supplies in, in unlikely situations. God supplies. Uh, yeah, you ever do this? You ever get so far down that you say, God, if you don't come through, I'm through. You ever been that low? You ever been that low before? So this, here's what the Bible says. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When you have needs, he's the one to go to. Well, I just tell you what, I'm going to get people to help me. And so uh, I'm going to start uh, trying to collect money for this endeavor, that endeavor. You know, maybe you ought to go to him first. Well, I've got this physical problem. Maybe you ought to go to him first. Well, I've got a child that's not obeying and a child that's not doing what they ought to do. Maybe you ought to go to God first. Amen. Does not the Bible say, seek ye first? The kingdom of God. Yes. So through unlikely sources, it was ravens that came to meet uh, the need of Elijah. Unlikely source. It was, uh, if you will please, the, the widow there, uh, the widow at Zarephath. Yes. That all of a sudden came uh, to Elijah and brought the bread and the, the need that he had in his life. Unlikely source. There was the little lad that had uh, five uh, barley loaves and two small fishes, and God multiplied them and fed 5,000, not including all the other ones that was there, such as the wives and the children. So it could have been upward to ten or 15,000 people, but because of a little lad that gave us lunch. Unlikely source. You'd be amazed how God could use the unlikely source. You know, I'm amazed at how God uses people that's the, uh, sort of like the, the quiet ones in the church. Oh, they're not the shouters. and Thank God they're not the powders. But they're the quiet ones. No, oh, they don't want any fanfare. They don't want somebody coming up and saying, Oh, you did such a good job. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, they're not looking for that. They're, they're just there. Faithful as can be, they tithe, they give offerings, they pray for the buses as they go out, they, they sit quietly in their seat and they listen to the preacher. Oh, they're not the big ameners. They're not. They're not. I had a fella years ago and he watches some of the podcasts and I love him. And uh, uh, Brother Stafford, he was one of my deacons up in Tennessee and he told me, he said, now, preacher, he said, I've listened to you preach before, and sometimes I know you get excited. He said, don't you expect me ever to get excited. He said, you know, I'm not that way. And he said, you'll probably never hear me shout amen. I said, I understand. But I remember one Sunday night, God just got, he couldn't contain himself. And so he got a, uh, this, this hanky out of his pocket. He didn't shout amen, but he walked back and forth across the back hind side of the auditorium just shaking his hanky. <laughs> now, by the way, you don't even have to do that. Now, I will tell you this as a preacher. Now, I know preachers. I've been preaching for 34 years, and I preach in conferences and all sorts of different churches and whatnot. But can I tell you, I do know preachers. And can I tell you one thing that helps a preacher is if you at least smile. A you know, preacher gets up and he tells me, it's bad. I can't tell jokes. I'm not a joke teller. I'll admit it. I'll confess it and I'll sign it. I'm, I'm not a joke teller. I wish I was. But I cannot tell a joke. I make people cry when I tell my jokes. You know? But, uh, but uh, 
you, you know, sometimes you humor me if I get a, a, a joke and I say, oh, I got a good one, you know. I, now, the problem is you know I'm not a joke teller, so you laugh before I tell it, hoping that you will get me not to tell it. <laughs> I understand. But can I say this? Can I say God supplies in unlikely situations? I was up in, uh, um, I was in, uh, I think it was South Carolina or someplace like that, and we were in a church, and uh, the pastor asked, he said, do you have any needs? Well, our computers had gone out, and uh, it, was a, it was a church, uh, yeah, an okay-sized church, but uh, I didn't think they were able to do something like this, and he said, well, what, what do you need? I said, well, we need some apples. We were talking about computers. I thought he knew what I was talking about. He said, well, we can go down to the farmer's market if you want. I said, no, these apples cost a little bit more than those that's in baskets. Oh, he said, you're talking about computers. Then he got with uh, Jonathan and, uh, and bought us uh, two very expensive laptop computers many years ago uh, when we were serving in evangelism. But can I tell you, I, I didn't see that coming. That was an unlikely, if you would please, situation. Yeah. Unlikely situation. Uh, we were at Soul Winning a couple weeks ago. Boy, I was sweating bullets. It was hot. It was like 108 or something like that on a Saturday. I was just sweating bullets. And this dear lady at the door, she said this. She said, now, uh, it looks like you like some water. Would you like some water? I said, oh, yes, ma'am. I like some water. And, uh, and she said, let me get you some bottled water. How many is with you? And on that particular day, there were several, and we were able to get some water for the different ones that was on the team on that particular day. Now, can I tell you what? Uh, unlikely situation. You know, God will take uh, and give you supplies in unlikely situations. You know, God would take and reach down and show. Uh, you, you were discouraged, and somebody comes up and say, I've been praying for you today. That's an encouragement. You know, somebody comes up to you and pat you on the back and say, boy, I tell you what, that was a good song. That's an encouragement. Amen. Somebody comes up and says, I've been wanting to shake your hand for at least a week and a half. I see you uh, up and down the hallway, and I, I just want to be a friend. Shake your hand. Can I tell you, uh, those type of supplies, it doesn't always have to be money. It doesn't always, it could be the blessing of somebody encouraging you. It could be the blessing of somebody just saying, look, I appreciate you. It could be the blessing of somebody just patting you on the back and saying, uh, just because you're here today, I'm going to have a better day. I mean, those type of blessings, all right? So God's an unlikely Savior. Uh, God saves unlikely sinners. God supplies in unlikely situations. Then God sends unlikely servants. Look, look at it, and I'm done. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. The Bible says, For, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that uh, not many wise men after the flesh and not many mighty, not uh, many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The base things, it says, of the world. The things which are uh, despised hath God chosen. Yea, the things which are not to bring to naught the things which are. It says that no flesh should glory in his presence. You know, God wants to take and get all the glory. God wants you to be able to say, boy, God gave me that blessing. Hallelujah. Uh, that's a blessing. You know, and that's why I say even in our public arena, it is good to speak about the Lord as much as you possibly can. I mean, if all of us do that, would that help people think better than the way they're presently thinking? Absolutely. So when God gives you a blessing, uh, God uh, all of a sudden allows you to see the sale. And uh, uh, you could go up to the cash rester and uh, speak to the cashier and say, what a blessing. Boy, God allowed me to see this today. Amen. Uh, enter God into your public speech everywhere you go. Amen. You know, uh, praise the Lord. That's a good hamburger. Uh, uh, thank the Lord God allowed you to be the one that served us today. We want to be a blessing and give you a tip. Uh, praise the Lord that you're here today. You're, you know, uh, it's always great to see your smiling face. But bring God into every single scenario. By the way, that'll help you too. It, it'll help you. If, you. if you start talking more about God, here's what it does. It changes your conscious awareness of God. 
Uh, if you start being thankful, putting God in that scenario, can I tell you, first off, he ought to be there all the time anyway. But when you start uh, bringing God, can I tell you, it'll help you to stay uh, out of sinful, temptational places. Amen. You start talking about him at the workplace. And all of a sudden, somebody's thinking about getting you involved in some crime or getting you involved in some uh, uh, activity that you should, uh, trying to get you to maybe cheat on your husband, cheat on your wife, or uh, maybe kind of do something. And you start talking about God. Watch what happens. There are certain people just going to steer clear from you because they think, oh, oh, and they equate it with religion, you know. Well, he's just so religious, I better not. But still, that's going to protect you no matter how they view it. Amen. You know, I mean, if you go up and say, boy, I'll tell you, I want to tell you something more. God blessed me this morning. I was able to get out of bed. I was able to come to the church house. God is good. Well, that sure is better than just saying, boy, I had a good morning this morning. That almost sounds kind of dry comparably so, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, sure it does. You know, if you would arm yourself with God, 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 God. Just arm yourself with uh, 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 God's blessings. And, and, and by the way, it'll change your spirit. Sure. Instead of walking around, woe is me, you're going to be saying, wow is he. I mean, instead of walking around like, you know, it's just, I, I tell you, uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm just so depressed. You don't need to be depressed. By the way, dear friend, if you're saved, you don't need to be depressed. Because your last breath here is going to be your next breath in heaven. And if your next breath is in heaven, what in the world are you sad about? Well, you know, I drive a dumpy car. Well, praise God for the dumpy car. Some people don't even have a car. Well, I live in a dumpy house. Well, that's your fault. I mean, no, praise God for the dumpy house. Some people don't even have a house. Well, you know, I've got an ornery wife. <laughs> well, you know, praise God that you got a wife. I know fellas that they wish that they had a wife. Maybe not the grumpy wife, but a wife. <laughs> I'm saying this, I'm saying that here's what our Bible teaches here. Our Bible teaches that God sends unlikely servants. Now, why don't you be that servant that is somebody that is always pointing other people to God? Be that servant that's always pointing other people to who God really is. You know, uh, he gives us the prescription to be able to live for him in this present world. How is it that we can trust God for that which is the unexpected? What do you do? You just keep trusting him. And by the way, unexpected blessings come. Unexpected blessings come. Uh, all of a sudden, you're living for God. You're doing your very best. But watch, you get weary in well-doing. Ever happen to you? You get weary in well-doing. Then somebody writes you a note. And they say, I want to thank you for living for God. Your testimony, your help has encouraged me this week to live for him also. Come on now, that, that'll do more than float your boat. That'll send you into orbit. You know, I'm saying this. I'm saying that when you serve him, unexpected blessings do come. Why? Because he's very familiar with how it is to be able to be the recipient of that which is giving out the blessings and the blessings as a man soweth. In your case, my case, that shall he also reap. So what do we do? Uh, we understand we have uh, a Savior that's an unlikely Savior. We have a God that gave uh, and saved us as unlikely sinners. Uh, God supplies in unlikely situations, and God sends unlikely servants, sometimes for a reason, sometimes for a season, and sometimes for a lifetime, does God send people in your life. And man, what a blessing it is. Yeah. What, a blessing. what a blessing it is just to, watch this, uh, walk in a place, buy a cup of coffee, and say, boy, thank you for the coffee, sure is good. Isn't God good? Boy, God is so good. I'm telling you, it changes the total equation of how people even deal with you when you bring God into the picture. Father, bless we pray.